Hi everyone, I'm Chris from Simply Classic. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we take inspiration and creativity to make something our own. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. To all of my subscribers, a very special thank you to you. I do appreciate all of you very, very much. Um, back a couple of videos ago, we looked at this bag right here as an inspiration piece. It is a Spartina 449 bag and it is pretty sophisticated and sharp. It's a custom order. Somebody requested that I make one like it for her and it's kind of been a long process and there's a lot of pattern changes as you saw in the last video. Um, in the midst of this, I came up with a new way to do straps, which I posted a separate video on that. So I guess really this is about the third video that has to do with this bag here. Um, but here is the finished product. Isn't it gorgeous? In the back, we have a slip pocket, nice deep slip pocket, a handle. We have our cross body strap with a buckle and our nice neat strap ends, which I showed you how to do in the other video. Um, inside I have got a linen lining with a key fob and several slip pockets and a zipper pocket. So in this video I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you how to do the lining because the lining is pretty straightforward. You just add whatever slip pockets and zipper pockets that you want and whatever other kind of detail you want in the um, bag. The main thing that I'm going to show you is how to construct because the back of the bag and, and the hot, putting it together is very different so that you can put this slip pocket in. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to show you how to put, I put this top handle on. Um, and that is pretty much everything. So I think she's going to love it. And I'm a tote bag girl, but if I wasn't, I think I might make myself one of these. This is beautiful. So until next time, get inspired. If you see a bag that you like and you're not really sure what pattern to use, or maybe you want me to do a video on it, email me. It's Chris, C-H-R-I-S at simplyclassic.net. And until next time, get inspired and happy sewing. In preparation for this video, I've actually done a few things already. I went ahead and put my strap connectors in and I did hidden connectors. I measured one and three quarter inches down and then went ahead and cut the slit and then installed the strap connector. Okay. And there are videos out there on YouTube on how to do that. So I didn't, I'm not going to go through how to do that. Um, I'm sure you can, there's several people that have done that. The other thing I did is I went ahead and put my lining together. Um, I left my zip pocket open and I left a great big hole in the bottom so that I can turn the bag. And then we'll uh, sew the bottom closed you know, through the zip pocket and do, do that method. I added two slip pockets um, a second slip pocket below the zipper pocket and then a key fob. And as I mentioned in my previous video, she wanted this linen as a lining and it's, it's very sophisticated. I really like it. So what I want to go over to with you right now is how to put the main part of the bag together because it's a little bit different than, um, it took me a little while to figure it out and it's a little different than anything I've ever seen before. So first thing I'm going to do is this is the main, the main pattern piece here, the main bag. And you want to make sure you're going to take your exterior lining piece. Um, let me go over first. I used woven fuse two on my linen lining pieces. I do not use any thing on my vinyl and my vinyl is from Bodio both this color and this color are both from Bodio. Um, 
the linen I think I just got from one of my local fabric stores somewhere. And then um, the only other thing I did was I put some Deco Bill Heavy in my flat. I went ahead and put my flat together. And all I've done so far is, you know, I, I sewed the sewed it right sides together, turned it out, put my Deco Bill Heavy in, and then top stitched. And you need to do that step first before you do what we're going to do here because you're going to need to insert your flap in just a second. So other than that, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Decoville Heavy in the bottom of the bag once I have the um, this fate or the main bag put together just to give it a little stability and I'm going to add some feet. But other than that, I'm not adding any other kind of um, interfacing or foam or anything like that. So you're gonna look to see what your shorter part of your face is. So remember, we cut off um, one and a half inches off of one side and that's your back. So you wanna attach your lining slip pocket to that back portion. And we're just going to go ahead and sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're going to top stitch it. Now I'm just going to turn and top stitch this. Make sure my seam is out good. And when you top stitch, you're just gonna use the normal 1 8 inch seam allowance. And if anything, I want my, I don't want my lining to show, so I'm actually gonna pull that down just a little bit more. I'd rather have it to the back just a tad. So that you can't see it. There we go. Good. So I'm going to switch to top stitch length here. So now we're going to put that aside for just a second. And we're going to take our back piece. Now, the back piece has got a slight slant to it, if you remember. We, um, the top is narrower than the bottom. So just make sure that when you sew this on, you're sewing it on correctly. So we're going to take our second Piece, and we're going to sew these right sides together. Now, before we do that, we're going to put our flap in. And the flap is going to go right side down. You're going to center it on here. So let's go ahead and mark our centers. Mark the long side center and then I'm going to mark the center of my flap.
Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is just baste this on. Now don't forget, if you're putting a magnetic snap on, you wanna go ahead and install that before you sew this flap on. I'm using a twist lock, so I do not have that on yet. Okay, so we're gonna baste this on. So our back piece on the top of this, like this, we're going to line up our centers first, and then our edges. Now this we're going to sew at a half inch seam allowance. I want this a little bit more of the flap to be in. Um, than just the quarter inch that I've been doing everywhere else. Now what we want to do is we're going to flip the flap and the back piece up and we're going to top stitch on our lining. Okay, so length on. Okay. So now we're going to put the back on the front. and we're gonna line up our pocket pieces. So you're going to take your main fabric, your main piece, you're gonna flip it up, because you don't wanna catch that, and you're gonna line up the bottom of your pocket. Bottom of your two pockets here. Okay, now, you see a little B on here because when I cut this main piece, I went ahead and put a B on there for back. So I knew which side was the front and which side was the back. So I didn't have to try to figure that out later. So we're going to go ahead and um, stitch this at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just the bottom right now. Bottom of the slip pocket, the exterior slip pocket. Flip our main piece back down. Go ahead and clip our sides. And we're going to go ahead and baste our sides. Oh, that 
see my mom, it's going up right there instead of down. Let me just cut that. Get rid of that bolt. Okay. There we go. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to baste these sides with a 1 inch, inch seam allowance and don't stitch, of course, on the bottom. We've already stitched our pocket closed down here. We have ourselves an interior slip pocket. Our flap is secure. And what I'm probably gonna do is right where the flap, I'm gonna thread here. Right where the flap and the pocket meet right here, put a rivet on each side there. So now what we can do is put our gussets in. So I want to go ahead and mark my center. I should be able to now take my two ends and I'm going to match them up here on the side to mark my center. You can see now that we have our back piece on, we'll be able to, we'll be able to do that because these two match up. There's our front and there's our back. And so we can go ahead and, since I forgot to mark my center when I was cutting my pattern, I will do it now. And the other side, the same thing. Okay. So now we can go ahead and put our gussets on. And I'm sure you've seen this before, you, you usually pin the bottom first or clip the bottom first, and then you're gonna clip one side. Now you've got some bulk here because you've got the side pocket. You're gonna to have to work a little bit to get your flap out of the way, but we purposely mitered this or, or um, slanted this in here when we cut our pocket piece just so that we could get our gusset on without catching our pocket. So if you're in doubt as to how much to actually miter it, don't be afraid to go ahead and, and miter it slanted in quite a bit. You can't, I mean, I guess you could go too much, but you're better off to go a little too much than not enough. <clears throat> so actually, let me put this side on first. Now, when you have a gusset, you always want to clip your straight edge. So I'm going to actually clip the bag, the face of the bag, just a little bit so that I can get this to fit in okay. And you'll see that it kind of spreads. I gotta do a little more here. for you so you can get it in there real good and clips are your friend when you do this
And I, when I first started doing this, I stayed away from gussets. I did not like gussets. <laughs> I would do box square bags and that was it. And let me tell you, practice, you just, you get to a point where you just, it does a lot for you. Practice makes perfect, I guess they say, right? I don't know that I'm perfect, but it certainly helps. So I'm gonna go back through, and you don't need to watch me pin this. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this and sew the gusset on each side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, put, my, put my rivets in where I'd like to have them. And at that point we'll come back because we're gonna to need to add our deco bill or pellet onto the bottom. So I've seen my gusset pieces on and I did two rows of stitching just to help to prevent the stitches from pulling um, when the bag's open and also just to give it a little reinforcement. I measured the bottom and I cut a piece of decobo heavy that's going to go here on the bottom. Okay, um, I'm gonna end up gluing that in once I turn the bag around. I wanted to show you that my gusset pieces ended up being just a tad bit too long. Okay, on both sides. So when you do this, if yours is are a little bit too long, don't worry, no problem. Just trim that off. Once you put your gussets on, you do want to go ahead and trim in these curves and um, that way when you turn it, you won't have any problems with it bulking right there. So I usually just take off, just take off. So you're about an eighth of an inch from the um, seam. And do the same thing here. You can see all my little clips there. Okay. Get this out of the way. Okay. So, let's turn it. Let's turn it and let's see what it looks like. Make sure we don't have any tucks in our gussets. And um, see what we've got here. Okay. Gusset looks good. Right, that one does too. Yippee! Okay, so we're getting closer. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and glue my decorable heavy to into the bottom. I'm going to figure out where exactly I want my rivets and I'm going to go ahead and put my rivets in here. When you sewed your gusset, when I sewed my gussets, I had to actually pull this out of the way. So just make sure you don't rivet it until after you sew your gussets on. And trim up my gusset pieces here so that they're even with the top and the, or the front and the back. And then we'll be ready to um, put the bag together. However, don't forget, you've got to add your snap connector on here, which I almost forgot. So I need to go ahead and do that. And then the other thing I want to show you is how to add the handle on the top. So let me go ahead and get what I need for that, and we can go ahead and do it. I am ready to put my strap on my handle. So from the center point, I know where my center is because I put my twist lock on. 
So I just went up, straight up, and from the center, I measured out three inches on both sides and I put a tiny little mark there. A one inch line is what I did. Then I'm gonna take my cutting tool and I don't wanna go all the way through. I just wanna go through the top layer. And I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna do the same thing over here, just very carefully. I'm gonna cut through my top layer. didn't quite get it. I'm just doing very light pressure because I don't want to press too hard and have it go through the whole thing. Okay, so I now have two slits. So I'm going to take my handle and I'm going to see if my slits are big enough. I can tell you that one is not big enough. Let's see if this one's big enough. I'd rather go small to start. And then, because you can always make it bigger. Of course, you cannot make it smaller. And neither one of them are big enough. So I'm going to come down to just go up a little bit more and down a little bit more. Let's see. Let's stick my knife in there. I'm just going to come up a hair. And you want it to be tight, obviously, you don't want it to be. Okay, so that's going to work on that end. And this one, make this one just a little bit bigger as well. Obviously, patience is important when it comes to this. Okay. So, I want about an inch of the handle to be inserted in here. So, you can kind of see the indentation of it. And I'm going to take my ruler. And let's see, it's about an inch right there. This side needs to go in a little more. And about an inch. And I had planned for about a two to two and a half inch drop. That's two and a half inches. If you want a smaller drop than that, you can push these in a little bit more. If you want a larger drop, then obviously you would probably have to cut it a little larger because I think I would put less than one inch inside here. I think you want at least one inch. Okay, so that gives it a, right at a two inch drop. Oops. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to stitch a box. And I'm just going to stitch down, over, up, and this way. It's going to obviously go through all the layers. So you're going to see the stitch on the back, but that's okay. And then I'm going to put a rivet in as well to hold it. And that's how easy it is to put a top handle in like this. It's really not that hard. Okay. I'm going to do that. Just go slow. And then 
we will be done. It came out so good. My strap, um, I'm actually waiting for a buckle because she does want it to be adjustable and the picture had a buckle. So this is gonna be the lower half. And then of course I got a longer side for the other side and the buckle's gonna go here and then it's gonna, it's gonna attach that way. It's gonna be adjustable that way. So, um, so I'm just waiting, that should be coming in tomorrow. I had to order one because I didn't have one in this color. Okay, so here's the finished result of the stitching with the rivets. And then on the inside, that's what you see. Okay, so easy enough. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you make yourself a beautiful bag. And until then, get inspired and happy sewing.